9.1 gas pressure. Pressure is defined as the force exerted on a given area. So gas molecules are moving about in a container uh, and they move in a straight line until they hit the walls of a container or until they hit another gas particle. And so um, when they hit the walls uh, or the surface of a container then they impart a force. Um, just like we can imagine if these were billiard balls and I just uh, used the um, or playing a game of pool and I hit the cue ball and it hits these balls on the pool table and they start flying around the table every time they hit the wall they kind of leave a, they have impart a force on the wall of the pool table well the gas particles do the same thing although it's, it's a much smaller force because the gas particles are much smaller so um, we can measure the amount of pressure in a gas system and what we're measuring is how uh, the force with which the particles are hitting the surface of the container. So um, the pressure and the density of a gas are related. Uh, if the uh, pressure is the amount of force that's being exerted on the walls of a container by the gas particles inside and every particle every time it hits the wall of a container it, le it exerts a small amount of force um, then the more particles there are and the more collisions there are with the walls of the container then the more force is being exerted so when there's a low density of gases and there's not very many gas particles per unit volume then uh, the pressure is generally low because those particles are not hitting the walls of the container very often. And when um, there are more particles, then those particles hit the container relatively more than when there are fewer, and the pressure goes up. There's also a um, relationship between altitude and pressure. Uh, the, the air pressure, uh, atmospheric pressure that we feel when we're driving up a mountain or when we're in an airplane. Um, sometimes it makes your ears pop um, when we're going up or down. And the reason that that happens is because there's gas inside your head, there's air inside your head, and when we increase altitude very quickly, then the pressure, there's not um, as much gas particles, there's not as many gas particles at a higher altitude. And so the sometimes the gas inside of our head, the air inside of our head, is not at the same pressure as the air outside of our head, and so when our ears pop it equalizes the pressure. And so um, the gas uh, around the atmosphere around the earth, uh, we can kind of think about it as the, those particles have um, a weight, and when you're really low and there's a lot of gas particles on your head, then the pressure is a lot higher because there's a lot of particles on your head between where you are right now and space. But when you're up on a mountain, there's not as many particles pushing down on your head between where you are and space because you're higher up. So um, your feet, you feel less pressure, less air pressure. One way that we can measure atmospheric pressure is with a device called a barometer. And a barometer uses a tube that has one open end and one closed end. And um, a vacuum is drawn in the tube, so there's no air inside this tube. Um, and one way that we can do that is by filling the tube up completely with mercury and then dipping the tip into a uh, a bowl of mercury like this while this tube is still full and then pouring this tube out into the bowl down here and as the mercury leaves this tube there's no air to replace it because the tip is inside this bowl and then that will pull a vacuum inside uh, inside this tube although it won't pull a complete vacuum I can't pull all of the air out uh, because what's causing the uh, what's going the atmospheric pressure is going to be pushing a little bit on the mercury in this open tub then it will push the mercury back up into the tube a little bit so if there's a vacuum here 
then there are no gas particles to push the mercury down. Um, but on the outside of this tube, there's not a vacuum. This is open to the atmosphere. This is just a, a bowl, a dish full of mercury. So as the atmosphere pushes down, atmospheric pressure pushes down on this mercury, it causes it to go up this tube a bit. In fact, um, when we do this with um, a tube that has a pretty small diameter, maybe um, uh, five millimeters or so, it's pretty small, um, the mercury will go up the tube about two and a half feet. If we were to do the same thing with water, because water is so much less dense than mercury, the water would go up the tube about 34 feet. So um, the atmosphere, as the atmosphere pushes down on the mercury, and the mercury travels up this tube, then we can measure how far the mercury goes up the tube. And so sometimes we measure the pressure in millimeters of mercury. And the reason that the units of pressure seem so strange is because we use this device to measure pressure. The atmosphere pushes down on the mercury and that makes the mercury go up this tube. And depending on how high it goes, we can say that the pressure is either higher that day or lower that day. And we measure it in millimeters of mercury. The pressure uh, of the atmosphere at sea level is generally about 760 millimeters of mercury. Another device that's used to measure gas pressure is called a manometer. And uh, this is a device that's used to measure the pressure of a gas that's enclosed in a container. So if we have um, a manometer and some gas that's in a flask, we can hook the gas up to the device while the stopcock is closed. And when we open that stopcock and let the gas into the manometer, it's going to push down on the mercury, just like the atmosphere would, it would push down on a barometer when the dish is open. So here, this is not and at the atmosphere pushing down on the mercury. This is just any gas that we're trying to measure the pressure of. We can open, open the stopcock right here, let the gas into the tube. The gas will push down on the mercury. And as it pushes the mercury down this end, then the mercury is going to go up on the other end. So when the level of mercury on both sides is equal, then the pressure on both sides is equal. And as I open up the stopcock and the gas comes in and starts pushing down on this side, then I can say that the reason this side is lower and this side is higher is because the pressure on this side is greater. The gas is pushing down. And I can measure that pressure difference by measuring the height of the, the difference in the mercury. If I measure this difference in height, then I can turn that into a, a pressure measurement. So generally, when we're measuring pressure, we use um, units of either millimeters of mercury. And again, when we're at sea level, the atmospheric pressure is usually about 760 millimeters of mercury. And we also um, measure pressure in a, with a unit called an atmosphere. And when we are at sea level, we have one atmosphere of pressure pushing down on us. So one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. Some other units of pressure that we might encounter are the Pascal. And a Pascal uh, is defined as the pressure exerted by a 0.1 millimeter high film of water on the surface beneath it. And um, a Pascal is related to uh, an atmosphere and a millimeter of mercury um, in the following way. One atmosphere equals 760 millimeters of mercury, and it equals 101.3 kilopascals. And so remember, kilo is a prefix that means times 10 to the third, so it means 1,000. So this is 101.3 thousand pascals. So a Pascal is pretty small 
compared to an atmosphere and compared to a millimeter mercury. There are a lot of these. Um, and another unit that is similar to a Pascal is called a bar. And a bar is 10,000 Pascals. And uh, one atmosphere is also about 10,000 Pascals, or excuse me, this is 100,000 Pascals, 10 to the fifth. And so this is about, um, about 100,002. It's a little bit more, 101.3. And so it's not one atmosphere isn't quite one bar, it's 1.013 bars. So they're pretty, pretty close. But you can see that um, one bar is exactly 100 kilopascal. So the units of pressure are generally related to each other like this. And another unit that's, that I didn't mention yet is Tor. And Tor just has the same... Um, is the same size as a millimeter of mercury. So 760 millimeters of mercury, 760 tor.